let's look at a, a problem. I think it might have been in this presentation or maybe the next one. But uh, a long time ago, there was a basketball player named Spud Webb. He was only five foot seven. And uh, so he was extremely short. And the problem says uh, Spud Webb had a vertical of 110 centimeters. Right, so he could jump up in the air, um, 1.1 meters. Um, and the question is, uh, if he if he reaches his height, what velocity is he going to have to leave the ground from? Right, so what was his initial velocity? Right, so Spud Webb is five seven. He jumps up in the air, and it gives you his height. It says he's five seven, but that doesn't really matter because uh, his vertical means that. It's how far did his feet get off the ground? I think anyways, or um, so in order to solve this problem, then you'd have to think about which equation am I going to use, right? As there's several equations with time in them, right? But we're not given a time in this problem. We could eventually get the time that it takes him to reach that height, but we're not given that time initially. And so you need to think, Okay, do is there an equation that I have all of the variables for? So if you know all the variables, then you might want to think about using that equation. Sometimes you might have to solve for the time, but sometimes you don't have to. And if you don't have to, then you can use this equation. So in this one, we know what his final velocity is because when when we throw when something jumps up in the air or it gets to the top. Right at the top, its velocity is zero, okay? And so we know his final velocity, and because we're just thinking about um, that first part of his jump where he goes up in the air, and when he gets to the highest point, then uh, his final velocity is zero, okay? So that equals zero. So then our equation becomes this part right here, so Vx initial, and there should be also a... Um, a minus here from our 9.8 because 9.8 is always going down. And so when we bring this over here, we get another minus sign, okay? But our minus signs cancel out, okay? So then uh, the minuses go away. So we have two times 9.8 times 1.1 centimeter, okay? So um, that means that if I solve for this, then he had to have left the ground with a velocity of 4.64 meters per second, okay? And, uh, and if you recall, one meter per second is about two miles an hour, okay? So then that means that he was going about, uh, he'd have to be going about, nine or 10 miles per hour when you left the ground. So that's how fast you have to jump. Or that's what your final velocity has to be uh, right when he leaves the ground. Now, when you're, uh, when you leave, well, at all times, the acceleration going down is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. But before he leaves the ground, his legs are also providing some acceleration. But as soon as his feet stop touching the ground, he's not accelerating up anymore. And so then the only force acting on him is gravity. And so his acceleration is always uh, pointed downward. All right. So we're going to go on to chapter three. Okay. So now we're going to start talking about uh, vectors and motion in 2D, all right? So we have, we've done a lot of one-dimensional problems where something's accelerating in one direction. We have uh, a diver going up and then coming back down. Then we had a rocket motion. We had cars going in one direction, but now we're gonna be dealing with projectiles. So projectiles would be two degree or uh, motion in two directions. Oh. So when I kick the soccer ball, it has an upward velocity and it has a forward velocity. And its forward velocity never changes, but its x velocity is changing the whole time. And 
Acceleration is only acting in the y direction. Okay, so there's no forward acceleration, uh, at least that we're going to consider. Right now, what about in real soccer games? Is there actual forward acceleration in a real for a real soccer ball? If you kick it hard enough, then wind resistance can actually become a factor. Okay, and sometimes the soccer ball will curve. So uh, if you watch last week's soccer game with St. Louis City, one person had an amazing shot where he kicked the ball and it actually curved and went sideways. And that's because of the wind resistance, the wind resistance and rotation of the ball, then you can actually make it sort of curve. Okay? But for us, we're just we're going to ignore all of that and we're only going to worry about. Uh, acceleration due to gravity. We're not going to worry about wind resistance or anything like that until maybe when we get to energy, then we can start thinking about um, wind resistance. All right. But usually for a lot of things like cheetahs, when they jump in the air, you don't necessarily have to worry about uh, wind resistance. But we can just treat it like parabolic motion. Okay, So it's going to go up and it's going to come down. But when it's traveling through the air, um, we can think about its forward velocity and its vertical velocity. Okay, so we're going to have to think about x and y, um, and so we're going to break it down into those uh, two dimensions. All right. So if you throw a ba a basketball, okay, then um, we can think about uh, its initial velocity. All right, so as soon as it leaves his hand, the basketball has a, a, a velocity vector like those green arrows. All right. Now, is the velocity vector going to change over time when you add the ball moving through the air? Which, uh, so if I throw this up here and I won't hit the Wi Fi router, but if I just throw it like this, okay. So it's clearly its velocity vector is changing directions, right? So the y, the y component is definitely changing. What about the the x velocity? Does the x velocity ever change? No, it's it's constant. There's no there's no change in the in the y in the x velocity because there's no acceleration in that in that direction. Gravity's only pointing down, and that's the big takeaway from this. Uh, chapter is X and Y are separate from each other. They are not connected to each other. Okay. Uh, usually projectiles have parabolic motion. Okay. So um, if we think about a parabola, let's plot a parabola. So let's plot X squared, we'll say x um, minus 5, whoop, minus 5 to 5. Okay, so usually a parabola looks like this on the left there, but for a projectile, okay, it's actually uh negative and we'll say we want the peak of our parabola to look like this all right so we'll raise it up here let's say oh there we go okay so here's our this this might be what a projectile looks like right so i just added the 200 there but i can Oh, actually, that's too much. Let's do 20. Okay. So when I throw something up in the air, don't worry about the equation, but it's going to have a motion like this. Right? It's going to start off with um, some initial velocity pointing in this way, and then it uh, it's going to go up, and it will come down, and it's going to land with uh, the same x velocity, but when it hits the ground over here, it's y velocity, 
is going to be equal and opposite to what it was when you threw the uh, when you threw it up in the air. Uh, we're also going to talk about circular motion. So if something's going in a circle, then what what direction is its acceleration going to be? It's always got to be towards the center. If the acceleration wasn't towards the center, then it would just uh, fly off in a straight line forever. Okay, so the blank of a vector is always a positive quantity. What is always positive quantity? Is it the x and y components of a vector? Well, I could have a vector going in any direction. Uh, the thing that's always positive is the magnitude. Magnitude is a scalar quantity, and it just tells you uh, how far it's gone or uh, what's, the, what's its velocity, what's the magnitude of the velocity, or what's its acceleration. But it doesn't give you uh, a direction. All right. If... Uh, AX is positive, AX is positive if the vector AX is directed blank and AY is positive if the vector AY is directed how? All right, so you have to choose your coordinates. Hopefully this is easy, but let's take a vote. Is it A, right and up? Or B, left and up? Or C, right and out? Okay, so... I think everybody voted for A. All right, good. That's good. All right, these hopefully are easy. Okay. The acceleration of a cart rolling down a ramp depends on the angle of the ramp, A, the length of the ramp, B, both the angle of the ramp and the length of the ramp, or D, neither the angle of the ramp nor the length. All right. What does the acceleration of the cart depend on? Is it A, the angle of the ramp, or B, the length of the ramp? Okay, you guys have to vote. So maybe take a minute and vote. What does it depend on? Is it A, is it B, the length of the ramp? C, both the angle of the ramp, ramp and the length of the ramp, or D, Neither the angle of the ramp. Okay, so a lot of people think it's B, right? So if I put my skateboard here, right? And if I just barely lift it up, hey, right, that's a very slight acceleration, right? And it's because of gravity, right? There's a small component of it due to gravity. If I make this really steep, then it's a little bit faster. Okay, but uh, does it depend on the length at all? Because it doesn't, I mean, at the beginning of the ramp, if the ramp is, has a constant angle, right? So, So if I'm on a really long ramp here and the angle doesn't change, let's say this is 30 degrees. Okay, if I start up up here on my skateboard uh, and I keep going, as long as the angle is constant, my acceleration doesn't change. And so it doesn't matter how long, uh, how long the ramp is, okay? It's only the angle, right? And so, uh, if we're thinking about, well, how does gravity affect, uh, how is it affected by the angle, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna break this up into vectors, but we know that gravity is equal to m times g, that's the force of gravity. And so my acceleration this way is just g. And g is equal to 9.8 meters 
per second squared, okay? Uh, but we can treat acceleration like a vector, okay? And so there's gonna be a component that's going this way, and there's also a component that's going this way. And what's really important is to remember that this is a right triangle here. Okay. And we're going to use this a lot. This diagram here is we're going to use it all the time, or at least in this chapter. But we've got this angle here, 30 degrees. And it's important to remember that that smaller triangle up there has the same angle. So this is also 30 degrees. Okay. And we're going to use this trick a lot, this little piece of trigonometry, right? right? Because those are similar triangles, right? They have the same angle. And so uh, now we have a component of the acceleration going in this direction, right? So uh, G is just pointing down. That's the, that's our acceleration vector. That's, but we want to find the component of that acceleration because if it's perpendicular to the ramp, right? You can't, the ramp is solid, so you can't accelerate through it. So the only component is going to be pointing along the same direction as the ramp, okay? So if I look at my triangle here, my hypotenuse is G, my angle is over here, and so the, it's going to be the opposite side. Okay, so then my acceleration in Y, so I'm going to write AY is going to equal G times sine of the angle there. Now, this equation is going to be very important. We're going to use it all the time. All right, so make sure that you understand how I got this. Because right, if I'm on the ramp here, right? Then I need to know what the angle of the ramp is over here. So what's this angle right here? And then I can use that to find the X and Y component of my vectors. Now, I keep saying X and Y, but how should I put my X and Y axis in this problem? How would I want to do that? Because remember, since we live in a... Uh, uh, a really big universe. The Earth is spinning. Uh, the Earth is also going around the sun. We can set our coordinate system any way that we want to to make our problem easier. And so for this problem, we're going to want to say that uh, X positive is going like this in the direction down the ramp, and Y is going in this direction. That's how we're going to set our axis for this problem. So then our x direction is going down here along the ramp. And then our y direction is if we traveled up perpendicular to the ramp. Okay. Now, um, if maybe you don't believe me right now, or you're like, Dr. Lizzie, what are you talking about? That's fine. Just trust me that it's easier if you do this way. And later, go home and convince yourself in your mind what I'm saying is true, okay? And we'll, we're going to talk about it a lot, too. So we'll do a bunch of problems. Uh, and we're going to, we'll go, we'll, we'll use this many times. Later, when we get to forces, we'll also use this. Um, but this is really useful. So make sure you understand how we got this. But um, for this problem, then, the acceleration of the car rolling down the ramp only depends on the angle. It doesn't depend on the length. Because acceleration is like a snapshot. It's our instantaneous acceleration, right? At one particular instant space and time, that's we just want to know what its acceleration is at that moment. All right. The acceleration vector of a particle in a projectile motion points how? What direction is the acceleration of our projectile? Okay. So A, it points along the path of the particle. 
uh, B is directed horizontally. C vanishes at the particle's highest point. Or D is directed uh, down at all times. Yes, do you have a question? Okay. So remember that gravity is constant on the surface of the earth and it always points towards the middle of the earth. So down, gravity always, always points down. All right. And then acceleration vector of a particle in uniform circular motion. So if you, Someday, if you have a kid and you go to the merry-go-round, okay, which way is the acceleration pointed? Well, if it's going in a circle, then it has to be pointed towards the center of that circle. Because if something's moving, Sir Isaac Newton tells us that that particle will keep moving in a straight line forever. Okay? So once something is going, if it's out in space, it'll just go forever. It's not like on the, on the on Star Wars movies, okay? Because when they're flying in a spaceship in outer space, as soon as they turn off their, their ion thrusters or their rockets or whatever, for some reason, the spaceship stops moving. Why? No, it would just keep going, okay? Once you get going fast enough, you just keep going at that speed forever. Hey, and if you want to slow down, then you're going to have to fire the rockets in the other direction. So when Luke Skywalker is coming to Dagobah, he would have had to actually flip his X-ring around and turn on the rocket thrusters and decelerate slowly. Hey, because I don't know how he slows down in space. The rockets are in the back. Hey, um, and another thing, if you slow down too fast, it will kill you. Because humans, you know, they do astronaut training and so they, they actually have this big centrifuge and they put the astronauts on it and they just spin you around fast enough until you're going fast enough where eventually you pass out. And at about six times the force of gravity, you, humans just lose consciousness, right? Your body can't handle it and you just black out. Um, and if you go fast enough, if you keep going, uh, if you go much higher, eventually your organs will liquefy, right? Your body can't handle that much force, right? Which is funny because on Star, Star Wars, you know, they come out of light speed. They call it light speed and they stop instantly, right? That would have turned you into jelly, right? You'd be dead. Everyone on the Millennium Falcon would be dead. You can't stop that fast. That's that's one of the problems when you try to get to Mars is, you know, you can build a rocket, but then you have to have if, uh, twice as much fuel, once half of it to take off and the other half to slow down, right? Because you've got the same amount of fuel to it, it takes to slow down. Okay. Well, let's talk about a velocity vector. Hey, okay, so here's our vector. It, it tells us that uh, it's pointed in that direction at five meters per second. Okay. Now, my wife just took trigonometry because she's getting her math degree. Uh, and she says, I hate vectors. Vectors are so awesome. Maybe you don't hate vectors. Maybe you just hate the person that tries to explain it. I don't know. But I guess you don't, hopefully you don't hate vectors, okay? But they're not, they're not terrible. Um, we just have to break them into their X and Y components, okay? So if you know that you have a vector like this, okay, it's going to tell you the angle. And so you think about, well, how do I get my X component and my Y component out of this thing, okay? So particle speed, it, uh, points of five meters per second is moving in the direction indicated by the y arrow, All right? Its magnitude, the magnitude of this vector is five meters per second. The magnitude of the vector is a scalar quantity. Um, we also need a direction for our vector. 
right? So we need to have magnitude and direction in order for us to have a vector. And it has an X and Y component. Okay, so if I know the angle, so let's just do a, Okay, so let's say we had a, our velocity vector here is five meters per second. And let's say this is a 30 degree angle. This is our velocity and we'll draw a little arrow there, okay? So then we have a, a, a VX velocity vector. That's, that's its uh, component in the X direction. And we also have a VY vector. We can call it a vector, okay? And that one just points in the Y direction, okay? And so we want to find um, X and Y, right? Well, this is just a right triangle here. So we can, um, we can use what we know from trig in order to get these components, okay? So we know that... Uh, Vx then, so this is my adjacent side here. So Vx is going to equal uh, V times cosine of 30 degrees, right? That's how I get my X. My Y is similar. Then I'll have Vy is equal to V times sine of 30 degrees. Okay, now uh, there's some other things I that I know. Okay, uh, let's remember our favorite cult leader, Pythagorean Pythagoras. He lived on an island in Greece. He had a cult. I don't know what that was like. Must have been pretty crazy. But we know that the magnitude of my vector v squared has to equal uh, v x squared plus vy squared, right? So I can, if I knew vx and vy, now I can get v, or I could solve for any one of these if I knew the other two. Uh, if I only knew vx and vy, I could get my the angle of my vector. I'd say um, tangent of theta equals it's vy. It's is it x over y or y over x? Okay, I'm gonna have to go to Sean's Handbook of Mathematical Tables and Formulas. Who remembers what tangent is it? Tangent of theta equals x over. Let's go back then to lecture one and look at our table because we did this in, in lecture one. We had a beautiful slide with all the trig that you'll ever need to know. It's opposite over adjacent, of course. Y over X, VY over VX. Okay, so I would say write this on your card if I were you, okay? So if you know any of this stuff, you can find everything you need to know about your vector. All right, so... Uh, let's find our X and Y components of V. Okay, so if my vector was, let's find VX. So I'll have five times cosine of 30. And I'm going to, uh, my, my program likes to do everything in radians. And so I'm going to convert it into radian, right? Because that's just how Mathematica is. And then I want to get my, I want to get it in decimal. Okay. So VX then should be 4.3. I'll write this over here. So VX is 4.33018 meters per second. And then VY. So I'll change this to sine. And that's 
So I'll say Vy equals 2.5 meters per second. Now, if my numbers here, okay, so if these numbers are bigger than five, I, you should know that you have some kind of problem. And I want to double check this just because maybe I put in my, I, I did the radians wrong, okay? So I'm going to check my answer here because if I use Pythagorean, the Pythagorean theorem, um, I better get that the magnitude of my vector equals five. Okay, so I'm going to have 2.5. So now I'm checking what I did. Plus, I'm going to copy this here I'm because then I'll have all the digits. Kind of cuts them off, which is... Okay, so that's all the digits. And I get five. Okay, so I found the components of my vector, my X and Y vector. So in V of X, it's 4.33, or uh, actually 4.3, because I'm gonna, if I only had two significant digits, so then this becomes just 4.3 meters per second, and then this is 2.5 meters per second, okay? So that answer makes sense to me, and I checked it using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so, um it's 10 50 so let's take a break and then we'll meet back at 11. <laughs> all right so here's my parallelogram and when I say parallelogram, it's a, a shape with four sides here. So I can I can draw my parallelogram thusly, okay? And now I get a, a parallelogram there, okay? But I think the uh, the tip to tail rule is is really useful in this, okay? If I move one like this, then however I draw this, the, the sum of my two vectors, A plus B, uh, equals S. All right. Let's go back here to my vector lab. So now I can, I can put many vectors here. I'm going to sum. I can sum. I can have more than one vector. I, I can have three vectors, however. However many vectors you like, hey. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna delete this one. No, we can't delete it, but that's okay. Oh, these are my velocity vectors. Oh, yeah. See, I can get, so I can do my X and Y components, and then I can sum my two vectors. There's velocity, okay? So you can do blue, that's your, oh, is that velocity too? Oh. Well, anyways, okay. So, this is a good video game. All right, so I can add vectors. I can use the tip to tail rule or I can use the parallelogram rule. Find the diagonal of the parallelogram formed by D and E. Okay, given vectors P and Q, what is P plus Q? Hmm. Well, let's go to our vector, our vector lab here. So, hmm, all right. I'm gonna draw, I'll move my sum over here. So vector P is kind of pointing down. I'll go like this. And then Q is going the other way. 
So it's kind of straight like this, maybe. Okay, so I'll put these like this. And then, so the sum of my vectors then, if I have one that, did I do those right? So P plus Q looks like, I don't think I did this right. Oh, that one should look more like that. Maybe. Okay. So then it looks like A. Yeah. There we go. All right. So I put these um, tip to tail, or if they were pigs, it would be snout to tail. <laughs> okay. So you can use your vector tool to kind of There we go, that looks better, okay. So I used my vector tool and I got the answer to this one. All right, so multiplying a vector by a positive scalar gives another vector of different magnitude, but pointing in the same direction. If you multiply a vector by zero, the product is the zero vector, All right? So let's say uh, something was traveling at one meter per second, but then I said, I want to go, I want to double that. So I multiplied it by two. Then the direction's the same, but it's twice as long. Okay, so you can multiply a vector by a scalar. That just changes the, the magnitude of the vector. So my new vector is B. B is equal to C times A. Okay, so... All right. A vector can't have a negative magnitude because a magnitude just tells you the length of the vector. If the vector is, if you multiply it by a negative, that reverses the direction of the vector. So if you have a negative vector, that tells you about its direction. And you can add a positive vector to a negative vector, but then you just add and subtract the X and Y components of that vector appropriately. All right, so. If it's negative, you can add it to a, another vector. You can also multiply a vector by a negative scalar. That's just going to change the direction and make it longer. So here's our vector A. First, they multiply it by a factor of 2. That just increases the length. And then down here, they multiplied A by a negative 3. So that negative reverses the vector, and it just makes it longer. Okay? So uh these are just simple vector operations you can multiply it by a scalar factor that's fine all right which of the vectors in the second row shows a plus b there's our um our vector a plus b right so it looks like right now it's in the parallelogram configuration. So use your imagination and move that vector B over to the, the snout of A, the tip of A. I call it the snout, the vector snout. Move B to vector snout A. And where do you get? Well, right. Uh, the one thing to think about in this problem is that um, we don't have any uh, any negative components in the x direction. Okay, uh, we do have. Now, are those are those the same length? It looks like the map in the y direction, right? A goes up as as far as B goes down, and so. It looks like the Y components might cancel in this one because the magnitudes of, of A and B are about the same, right? And so, um, yeah, it ends up just being C is pointing to the right, right? Because the magnitudes are about the same. Now, maybe uh, they don't point in the same direction, but that's okay. We can still add them together. All right. So if we want to subtract a vector, hey, okay, there's our vector B up at the top. So to subtract B from A, first draw A, and then 
draw the vector b at the end of a and re reverse its direction okay so uh you can do that on a piece of paper and then we end up with a new vector over here and remember that negative sign just tells us about the direction so uh, it just reverses B. So you reverse the sign of the components in B, uh, uh, but the magnitude of B stays the same. Okay, <clears throat> well, let's take a vote on this one. Uh, given vectors P and Q, what is P minus Q? How many people think it's A? B or what about C? Are you sure it's not A? Okay, what about D? All right. Yes, the D's have it. We uh we flip Q around and then we put it on the snout of P or the, the tip of P, and there we go. P minus Q. All right. Which of the vectors in the second row shows 2a minus b? All right, so we double a, or all right, so how many people think it's a? How many people think it's b? What about c? D? Or E. Hmm. Well, why don't you guys talk about it to somebody near you if you're unsure? Discuss it with your neighbor. Explain it to them. All right, how many people think it's A? How many people think it's B? All right, pretty much everybody thinks it's A, right? Because we B now is pointing to the left and positive, but there's two A's, and so A is A is the only one because it must be it, it's got to be a lot taller. All right, so two A minus B. All right, coordinate system and vector components. So um hopefully this is review we're going to use cartesian coordinates meaning we have x and y i don't think we're going to do anything with three dimensions so all of our problems are just going to be in two dimensions because we can always shift our coordinate system uh in in real life uh if you kick a soccer ball kind of has three dimensions right it goes this way but i can if my coordinate system is like this I could rotate it so that it's pointing in one direction of the motion, right? And so then I could say, all right, there's no component of motion in Z. Z would be coming out of the board. I'm just going to do X and Y, and the Y axis is 90 degrees from the X axis. And these are just Cartesian coordinates. We're not going to use any other coordinate system. Okay, so vector A and the XY coordinate system, we define two new vectors parallel to the axis. So we've got our X and Y axis. We have our vector A, then there's a component of it in A and a comp an X and a component in Y. And so just like we did with our, so just like we did a couple minutes ago, okay, we could use our trig functions to get either the X and Y components, or if we only know an X component, then uh, we could get the Y component and the magnitude, okay? So our trig functions are gonna be super handy, um, and we're gonna 
it's always the same uh, trig identities. Okay, so in our problem here, uh, we've got our A and Y components, and so um, we could flip one of those. What does it say? You can use using the parallelogram rule that A is the vector sum of the two component vectors, AX plus AY. I don't know why it says minus there. That's supposed to be a plus. And it's AX plus AY. I don't know why. I think that's a mistake. All right. Um, so when you tackle these problems, find the X and Y components first. Right. So if you uh, the absolute value of AX of the X component AX is the magnitude of the component vector AX. The sine of AX is positive if X points in the positive X direction and negative if AX points in the negative X direction. The Y component of AY is determined similarly. Hey, that's a lot of a lot of words. How do we find the magnitude of a vector? I just said, hey, what's the magnitude of my vector? Yeah, it's the absolute value. If I knew, say, the x and y components of my vector, then I could just use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? And so when it says the magnitude, just take... Um, AX part, you disregard the sign. So maybe it's pointing in the in the negative direction. You disregard that because magnitudes are always positive. Okay. And if we have an X component, it's always pointing along the X axis. So here's a vector. Call this vector C. C has two components. So here's my vector C. It has one component going this way. So we'll call this CX. That's also a vector. And then over here, we'll call this this one CY. All right, then I would write the vector C. C is the sum of CX minus CY, right? Because CY is pointing in the negative direction. Then um, if I wanted to find the magnitude, I know that this is negative, so I'd say, well, the net CY, the magnitude of this is just CY. All right, so we can have lots of different uh, configurations, uh, but you can always decompose your vector into X and Y components, no matter what's happening. Um, each component can be described by a single number, a scalar called the component of the vector. And component AX tells you two things, how big AX is and toward which end of the axis it points. So the a negative sign, if it's negative or positive, that gives you the direction. And then AX just tells you the magnitude. And of course, if you have a vector A here, we talked about this before, then... Uh, AX is A times cosine of theta, and AY is equal to A times sine of theta. And here we have a right triangle, 
and then our angle is over here. Okay, so up here, these two. These two equations are really important for our when we're thinking about vectors. So those would be good to put on your cards. Then, of course, if we know the components AX and AY, we could get the magnitude of our vector using the Pythagorean. Okay, so, and of course, if we want to know what the angle is of our vector here, if we know the A component and the Y component, we can use arc tangent or inverse tangent of AY over X or AY over AX to get our angle there. Okay, so these. This slide um, and the last slide, these two can you can use to find almost everything you need to know about vectors. Now, um, we'll get to some problems later when we start talking about force and um, situations where things are hanging from cables where then the, the vectors can get a little bit crazy. But even in those problems, no matter what we do, Whatever the vector is, you should always try and get the components of the vector first. Right? So when you when you come to a problem like this, your strategy is what vectors are important and how can I get the components of those vectors? All right? So that's your first the first thing to do. Find the components of the vectors and then find the angle. So remember this set of equations. Just what we talked about over here, okay? So same thing, use these equations and you can find everything you need to know about a vector. All right, so let's, let's test you. Hopefully this isn't too bad. All right, we've been talking about vectors. What are the X and Y components of the vector? Now, this wasn't the kind of problem we were talking about where it's hard to tell, right? Okay, so this one should be pretty clear. I mean, we, we mentioned a long time ago, I can, you can also describe a vector by its X and Y coordinates. The first one is gonna be the X component, the X component. And the second number is the y component. Okay, so look at the vector up there and tell me what the x and y components are. Is it a three two? Is it b two three? Yeah, or c minus three two? No, definitely not c or d. All right, so definitely b, as right here, I count over two. That's uh two for X and then three up. So that's three for Y. All right, that one was easy. Here's a trickier one. What are the X and com Y components of this vector? Hey, okay, let's take a vote. Is it A, three, four, B, four, three, C minus three, four, or B, four minus three, or E? three minus four. Yeah, it's definitely E. So uh, first we go over three, one, two, three, and then down four, uh, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Aha, now we're a little tricky. We moved it off of the axis. <laughs> what are the X and Y components of this vector? Okay, um, is it A? One minus three, what about B? Minus three, one, uh, C, one minus one, or D minus four, two, okay. Or E, two minus four. So uh, definitely D because we move over 
minus four this way, even though we didn't start at the origin, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, and then we go up two. All right, so X is minus four and two is positive two. Great. All right, you guys are getting this. Okay, so the angle that specifies the direction of vector C is what? A little trickier now because we got all these, all these lines. Okay, so look at the angle. Remember what tangent is. What is tangents? Yes, opposite over adjacent. Okay, so is it? What is the angle by or tangent of CX minus or divided by CY? Is it B? Arc tangent is the vector CY divided by CX. It's a component, component vector. Or C, tan, arc tangent or inverse tangent is the magnitude of CX divided by CY. Or D, magnitude of CX divided by the magnitude of CY. Or is it the uh, inverse tangent of the magnitude of CY over CX? We got a lot of notation in this one. So why don't you guys talk about it? I guess in physics, Sometimes the notation gets a little crazy, um, but that's just because the universe is a complicated place. Uh, but, all right, so talk about it. Okay, let's take another vote. How many people think it's A? What about B, C, or D, or E? Well, uh, in this one, the correct answer is D because we can only use the magnitude of those components. I don't know how you put a vector into the tangent function, but tangent can only handle scalars, right? It does. It can't handle a vector, right? Um, that's a little bit strange because in a in a in a in a trig function, it can't have any units. It can only be a scalar, right? So if it has units, because an angle doesn't have units you need to come out with no units so we can only put the magnitude in there okay oh so now we need to we need to calculate this actually why don't you actually calculate this on a piece of paper okay the following vector has a length of four units what are the x and y components okay so get your calculator out actually calculate this hopefully it's not too bad um so you should have the equations now, okay? So we have we have the magnitude, and we have the angle. So find the x and y components.
And you can talk to other people if you want to. Hey. Yeah, so actually calculate this, write this all out, then take a picture and email it to me. And why do I have you email stuff to me? It's because I want you to actually solve the problems because how boring is it to listen to me talk for an hour and 50 minutes? Probably real boring. <laughs> Doing problems is better. And then as you're sending your emails to me, I can look at it in real time and see what you got. All right. And make sure you put it in your calculator and actually get a number. Okay.
All right. So I think almost everybody got this done. I think everybody sent me an answer. Um, with this one, remember that um, it looked like everybody had cosine and sine now, but then remember for your final answer uh, in, the, in the X component, it's actually pointing to the left. So that needs to be uh, a negative sign. Now, if you got it wrong, don't worry. You still get full points for because you turned it in. I can see what you're doing. So that's great. Um, so don't worry if you get the wrong answer. We're not going to count it against you. But just remember to uh, add the negative sign if it's going that way. Because you, you'll get the right magnitude with sine and cosine. But then you might need to look at it and say, oh, okay, that one's going negative. Okay, so... Um, the correct answer then is B minus two and 3.5. Okay, so that's my, that's the correct answer. Okay, and then make sure that you, um, make sure that you actually put the numbers in and send that to me. Okay, so then uh, same vector this time. Okay, we already know the magnitudes now. We calculated those. Uh, so the following vector has a length of four units. The angle is the same, okay? But now uh, the direction ha has changed. And when I say direction, I mean, uh, you know, now it's pointing, the vector is actually pointing downwards, okay? So uh, now we need to look at this and we need to say, all right, our components, first of all, in Y, it's going to be negative because it's pointing to the left and then in uh sorry and yeah for x is pointing to the left so that's negative and then it's also pointing downward so y is also going to be negative okay so here the e is the only one with where both of those are negative okay um and we also uh chained on the last one it was uh minus two three point five but now, since we're in a different quadrant, okay, our vectors orientated differently. So, so we've got one vector going this way, and then we've got another vector going like that. Okay, so the we reverse our answers and um, and they're both negative. Okay. Hopefully you're like, wow, this is really easy. And it makes perfect sense. And we'll, you know, we want to repeat it enough so that it's so obvious that they'll just never forget it. Okay. All right. So find the X and Y components of the acceleration vector. Shown in the figure below. Okay. So we just did a similar problem. Okay. Um, and in, uh, in this chapter, we're going to be dealing with acceleration, velocity, and displacement. So we could, uh, the vector could be any one of those things. Okay. Uh, remember, displacement tells you how far you are from the origin. And the acceleration... Um, it tells you what direction the velocity is changing. Right. Okay? So if our if our if our velocity was going up that way, it might be slowing down. Right. So those two those two things aren't necessarily related. But uh, so like if you're if you're on a skateboard, where'd my skateboard? So if I get on my skateboard and I'm riding. My velocity vector is this way. Which way was my acceleration vector? Yeah, I'm pointing the opposite. Because if I'm going like this, my acceleration is behind me. I'm slowing down. So even though my velocity was this way, my acceleration was that way. So my velocity is in the direction of my motion, but the acceleration doesn't necessarily have to be. But we're just trying to find the components of our acceleration vector here. So we have our magnitude, six meters per second squared, and we have our direction. 
So now we can use our trig functions. We can find everything we need to know. And what is the problem? What is it asking for? Oh, find the X and Y components of our acceleration vector. Okay, so now we're going to use cosine and sine. And we know that since it's pointing uh, to the left and also downwards, that it's going to be, those components are going to be negative. Okay, so I've got my triangle there. I've got a 30 degree triangle. It's a right triangle. But at the end, I'm going to go back and add the right uh, sign to these vectors because I know that they're both going to be negative. All right. So here, all right. So the a, the x component of this, right, is going to be minus a times cosine of thirty. They just added the minus sign there because they knew from the picture that it's pointing over that direction. Okay. Same thing with y. A y equals minus a times sine of thirty because it's pointing downward. Right. And I just have uh, AX here. So my angle here is 30. My adjacent side is, is right here. So I'm going to use cosine to find A of X. And then my opposite side of the triangle is, is over here. So this side is going to be sine. Okay. So we, we just did this with that problem before. Okay. But now we're just, this is acceleration. Okay. So AX is A times cosine of 30 degrees. So I put in my six there, six meters per second squared times cosine of 30 equals minus 5.2 meters per second squared. In Y, I have uh, minus six meters per second squared times sine of 30, which is equal to minus three meters per second. And, uh, when you look at your answers here, when you get them out of your calculator, these had better be smaller than the magnitude of your acceleration. So the magnitude of our acceleration was, I think it was six, and each of the X and Y components has a smaller magnitude than both of those, and they're both negative. So look at your plot and say, okay, that's right, because they're both pointing uh, once AX is pointing in negative X direction and AY is pointing in the negative Y direction. Okay, so. And we use these trig identities again. We're going to use those a lot. So we use the same trig identities to identify, to find our components of our vector. All right, then assess. This is important. After you get the numbers out, think about them. Like, does it make sense? Does this, uh, so the magnitude of the Y component is less than that of the X component. That's good because X is clearly longer in our picture. So, you know, trying to draw the angle accurately can help you, but X is, uh, clearly bigger than Y. And then a, AX and AY still have units of meters per second squared. So did your units come out correctly? If you end up with meters per second, something went wrong because you, you were supposed to find the velocity, not the acceleration. Okay. Um, so when we add two vectors, just add their components. So you add the X to X and you add the Y to Y and you get your new, um, you get your new vector, okay? So, Let's say we have two vectors, A, where uh, one component is five times X hat 
uh, minus three y hat. And then our vector B is two x hat plus seven y hat. Okay. Let's do some, some vector math. And let's find the vector 2a minus b. Let's just find this vector for fun. That's going to be our new vector, c hat. Okay, so this first part here, 2a, let's write out what 2a is. So 2a is going to equal, I'm going to say 5 times 2, that's going to give me 10 x hat. And then 2 times 3, that's going to give me 6. So this will be minus 6 y hat. And then b is the same. Okay, so now over here, let's. I'm going to draw these vectors. And I will... I'll start with 2a. I'm going to draw that first. That's positive. Oh, this is going to be negative here. Okay. Hopefully I didn't make the vectors too big, but that's fine. I'll draw 2a first. So I'll start at the origin. And I'll, I'm going to go over 10. So I'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I'm going to go down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so now I'm going to draw my vector. This is 2a. This vector is 2a. Right, and then B, I want, uh, I said minus B. Okay, so minus B is going to equal minus 2X minus 7Y. All right, so I'm going to say, and I'm going to start at the end of this vector. So I'm going to go over two in the minus direction. This will be one. Two and then I'm gonna go uh downward seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this is this is minus b. And my new vector c then is going to go over here. Okay, so that's my new vector c. And my new vector c then I can just write it as okay, so it's gonna be. I'm going to go down here. So what did I do? Um, in Y, I, I look at my two vectors here. I went down minus 13. Well, let's check it from our picture. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's going to be my uh, Y component. So I'll be minus 13 Y hat. And then in X, I had 10 minus 2, so that should give me 8. And I'll check over here. I'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's going to be 8 x hat. Okay? And if I want to find the magnitude of C, then I'm going to say, all right, I've got 8 and 13. So then the magnitude of C. Okay, this is how you find a magnitude is going to be uh, it's going to be eight times eight, then plus minus thirteen squared. All right, so I'll go over here to another square root, and I'll say eight squared plus. 13 squared, and I want it in decimal form. So that's going to be my magnitude of C is going to equal 15.26. And to find my angle, okay, to find my angle, then I'm going to have my uh, X and Y components. So I want to find the angle. I'll find this angle right here. 
So here's my angle. So then this is adjacent and this is uh, opposite. So then my angle, it will be tan of theta is gonna be this one. So that'll be, uh, that will be 13 divided by eight. Okay, and so my angle is gonna be uh, theta equals the inverse tangent of 13 divided by eight. So I'll say arc, arc tan of 13 divided by eight. And then this is gonna be in radians. So I'm gonna multiply it times 180 divided by pi. And my angle is going to be that's weird. Oh no. I want oh I used the wrong brackets, that's why. See 93 degrees, that doesn't make any sense to me because I used the wrong brackets. No. All right. 58 degrees. That doesn't seem right. Hmm, it doesn't look like 58 degrees. This way it was 13. Oh, it's because it's supposed to be eight divided by <laughs> Dr. Wizzy. I'm confused. All right. 13, there we go. That should be more like a 30 degree. There we go. That just didn't seem right to me. This looks more like a 30 degree angle than a 60 degree angle because I mix I mixed up X and Y. So the angle here, this should be the angle is equal to the inverse tangent of eight over 13, which gives me uh 31.68 or that'll be 32 degrees and then the magnitude this will be actually this should be 15.3 in whatever units i have okay all right well that's all for today sorry we went over but hopefully you'll never ever forget how to do vector and yes all right so i'll see you tomorrow um, now I think I was supposed to have office hours at one thirty today or one o'clock today, but I can't make it today. And so, but I will be available at five today. So if you'd like to jump on zoom with me, then we, if you have questions, I'll be on zoom at five. Uh, or if you have a different time that works better for you, email me, I'll be available. Thank you, like, and subscribe down below.